sticking to health goals when life doesn't go as planned. Um, for those who are new here, welcome, welcome new friends. We are so excited for you to be here. Um, so we are I'm La Vida. We are, I like to say, a one-stop shop for all things life. Um, so we help all of our clients through any of their life coaching uh, goals. So whether that's career coaching, helping you transition into a new job, leadership, elevating and escalating your, your leadership skills, life, and then my focus, my specialty, which is health and wellness. And I am Jill. I am the health and wellness coach here with Amla Vida. Um, I actually specialize in body confidence and self-acceptance. So a little bit about my history. Um, I came from, I started coaching a few years ago with a certification in body confidence. And so through that, through my own journey, um, I just kind of evolved into more of health and wellness, realizing that there's so, health and wellness is so broad. It's so broad. And I wanted to, given my own journey and my own experience, my own struggles and challenges, I really wanted to make health individual for each per for anyone and really just helping to put a different spin and different light on what health and wellness means to you. Because it's so vague, what I get to help my clients do is really help them hone in on what does health mean to you, which we'll go over today. Um, and then also what does based on your own experience, what is health and how can we work to achieve those goals? Everyone's goals are different. Everyone's version of health is different. So that's what I get to do is help you clarify that. So agenda today, fun stuff. <laughs> Why do goals fail? What do we need to do when change happens? And then towards the end, um, we are gonna go through a little workshopping um, activity where you will get to actually workshop some of these, the action plan, and the goals that we have. Um, so make sure you have, if you don't have anything to write with or write on yet, um, please go ahead and just grab something really quick. All right, picking it right off. So I would love to hear from the group. Go ahead and, and put it in the chat box. Um, what do you think, why do you think health goals tend to fail? And you just put in a few chat or a few words, whatever that, whatever comes to mind. So why do you think health goals tend to fail? And this could be based on your own experience. It could be based on other people's experience. Brenda, unrealistic. Yes. Delicious food is immediate gratification. Ooh, love some of these words, these rules. Inflexibility, trying to do too much at once. Oh gosh, yes. Feel you on that one. Um, because our beliefs don't always line up with our goals or we set ourselves up for failure by setting expectations too high. Ooh, Lindsay, love that. We're actually going to go a little bit into some of those beliefs not lining up with our goals. You don't put yourself first. Yes. These are all, these are all great, great. Love these. All right. Times of stress trigger old lifelong negative coping habits. Yes, so a lot of habits, right? Habits that we haven't really been able to, to work through and make them work for us. Um, so accountability, not important enough, not meaningful enough, um, no action plan, don't know how. Especially now hard to find energy. Oh my gosh, yes, Sarah. We're actually gonna talk about a lot of that today. Lack of motivation, yes lack of willpower, all of these. Keep them coming. I love these. So we're all kind of on the same page. So this is what I like to do is ask these, these discussion questions. Just everyone's definition is different, right? Like I would have seen before. Health is so vague. And I feel that if you are here, you've had health goals before and you might not have achieved them or you've achieved them or you're just kind of looking for something to refresh your whole goal setting system. They're not realistic or need to be more specific. Yes and driven by what you personally want for yourself besides what others want. Ooh, yes, like projected goals. So that's a lot of what uh, I get to work through my clients with is they have these ideas of what health should be, right? What health should look like. Um, and so it's a lot of seeing what other people are working towards. Social media does a whole mind F <laughs> with health. Um, and diet culture as well, kind of sprinkling little things into our subconscious, making us think that health should be something when it really is not. All right, awesome. Love those, love those uh, suggestions, guys. All right, so now that we're kind of all on the same page, 
let's shift into, so now that we have, why do health goals fail? Well, forget about goals, focus on systems instead. Um, so, all right, last one. So not being, not being, happen to go to a group class, to yoga. Yes. So just a lot of time. So in terms of the, the goals, the goals failing, just time, all of these different things. So how does that sound? Forget about goals, focus on systems instead. Um, has anyone read the book Atomic Habits? I'm reading it again. So I have it right next to me. Awesome, awesome, awesome book. Highly recommend it. James Clear is, is the author. Um, so yeah, so focusing on systems instead. So systems is, so systems is essential, essentially what you, what process you create for yourself, individual to yourself, unique to yourself, that helps you stay focused and stay grounded, working towards your goals so that whatever is going on on the outside, chaos, change, all of this stuff going on, that we have something that can keep us centered, have something that can keep us focused, grounded. And so our systems, our goals might change, life might change, circumstances might change, right? But if we have a strong foundation of what our systems look like and can be, that's how we can better adapt to change when stuff is kind of going crazy. What is the name of the book? Oh yes, Atomic Habits. Um, side note, I will also be sending a recap email out to everyone with the recording. And I'll also be sharing um, resources, uh, additional resources in there. And I'll make sure to include a link to this book. Um, fantastic book, highly recommend it. And thank you everyone for chiming in there. Um, all right, oops. Oh no, man, there we go. All right, just kidding. Let's talk about systems a little bit more. So systems, so think about this. And I totally resonate with this story because this is my own story. <laughs> so imagine you have a really messy bedroom and you finally muster up all of the energy to clean your bedroom, right? And you finally do it. It looks great. You might take a picture or you just appreciate it. Um, and, but if you are not, I'll speak to myself because this is a true story, but when I do not change my behaviors and I still maintain the same behaviors, the same habits, the same patterns, and I'm not changing any of that. Well, guess what? In a week, my bedroom is going to be messy again and I'm staring right at it and it is messy again. And so what I've done there, and this is an example, right? Of course, is that I treated the system or treated the symptom without addressing the cause. So I was just kind of putting a Band-Aid on top of this, right? Just cleaning up my room. There you go. It's done. Well, look what happens. It's messy again. So it's all about what we really need to change are the systems that cause the results that we don't want. So it's kind of taking a step, kind of peel, looking under the hood, taking a step farther and just asking ourselves, okay, why does this keep happening? So this is what like getting into habits, right? Why did this habit keep happening? So we want to work on solidifying our systems and understanding what our systems are because that commitment to the process or systems is what determines the progress. And another cool thing about this is that it allows us to take more responsibility for our health goals. Because if we're only focus, focusing on the results, there's so much that can change around us that can impact those results, right? So with change and with chaos, if we can focus on the system and the process, that's how we can take more responsibility, but then also stay committed to it. And this, this quote that I, that I also took from the book is, the problem isn't you, it's your system. So what do we do? Kind of makes you feel a little bit better, right? A little bit better that we don't just have to depend on willpower or motivation or you know anything else that we have to muster up. Because yes, to to uh, I forgot who said it was lack of energy, one hundred percent. Yes, exhaustion. Sarah, not having enough energy to do some of this stuff, right? So if we miss our opportunity of where of whatever our goal is, let's say a daily goal, right? while there are other things that we can still work on to help us stay focused and stay centered when life happens. So what do we do? Oh, oh man, 
Oh, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> plan for change. This is what happens when I make last minute changes to my slides. So plan for change. So this is where we get to actually establish, okay, what is it? What can we control, right? What's in our control? Because life outside circumstances, those can change. We do not have any control over that. As much as we like to maybe think that we have control over other people or our job or work or all these other things, we really only have control over ourselves, how we respond, how we show up, how we think, feel, act, just us. And so when we can feel more centered and more grounded, more confident in ourself, it helps us to stay focused, looking in the right direction, as opposed to getting distracted by all of the stuff that's going on outside of us. So what do we do? Releasing expectations and sticking to the schedule. So this is something that I do with my clients all the time. And we really actually do a, a deep dive into this. So, so health goals, of this is what we focus on a lot. And so unpacking these, so sticking to the schedule, observe your week. So seeing that our weeks are always changing, or maybe they aren't, just take a step back and just observe where in your week do you have time? So what is your, what does your, where are your energy levels? What is your lifestyle like? Where do you, what do you tend to do? And of course we wanna do this without judgment, right? So just observing, okay, where might I be able, where do I have the most energy to put towards my goals? So sticking to that schedule and see what consistently works with you. And so what that might look like is let's say, so for example, uh, so something that I do is Mondays and Fridays, I, I designate those days for my movement. So I, I try to do any sort of movement every single day, whether that's 10 minutes of stretching, whether that's going for a walk, whether that is, is going for a long bike ride with a class, right? My, I know that I'm doing any sort of movement each day, but sticking to a schedule helps me to eliminate that negotiation process, right? So we already have it planned out. So Mondays and Fridays are yoga or Pilates. The three other days of the week, I get to choose however I'm feeling. But sticking to that schedule helps me to release the expectations and still be able to kind of set boundaries around, around my, my own workout plan. So establishing boundaries. So here you go. Boundaries, this could be, it actually is, and, and uh, could be a whole entire webinar and just boundaries and non-negotiables. So establishing boundaries for yourself. So this is where we can kind of get a little bit more broad. So for perfect example, so movement. I know for my health, I need to do some sort of movement every single day. And so my boundaries are around that is, 10 minutes or whatever it might be each day. That's my non-negotiable. That's my bare minimum, right? So your non-negotiable is what you absolutely need each day to take care of yourself and show up as your best self. So establishing boundaries around those can help you stay committed. And so again, non-negotiables are could be drinking a glass of water right when you wake up. That's something that I do every day, taking my dog for a walk every morning movement, five minutes of any sort of meditation, breath work, whatever it might be. So those non-negotiables are your baseline. Then of course, on the days that you have more energy or you slept in or you, or you got really good sleep or whatever it might be, then you can do a little bit more, but you just want to have that baseline so you know what, what your non-negotiables are. It's clarifying values. So this is something else that I work a lot on. We actually have an entire e-coaching module on just values. What is important to you in life? So I know we're, we're talking about health goals here today, but what is important to you? Because even sometimes, even if health is important to you, sometimes values on whether it's maybe time with your family or it is uh, doing hobbies, or it's practicing, practicing something, practicing a skill, learning a new book, reading a new book, whatever it might be, whatever those values are, 
We want to make sure that we are very, very, very clear about those because that's going to help us stay committed. Again, remember, grounding, focused, what we can control. And values helps us to share what is important to us. How can we make better decisions and maybe even help us kind of morph or mold our goals, health goals, into something that aligns with our values, aligns with our values. So these are all things that planning for change, right? These are all things that are important to us, unique to us, that don't necessarily have to change when our environments change. And then, so the if-then technique. So this is something that is also, um, that I love. And this is something that ties into the boundaries and your non-negotiables. So fill in the blank. And this is something you can jot it down. If blank, then your response. So for example, if I don't work out this morning, then I will do something after work. If I don't eat nutritious food, nutritious breakfast, then I will make a healthy dinner. And so you kind of see how, how this goes, right? So I'm curious, has anyone heard of the if-then technique before? Or has anyone done this? Curious, would love to, would love to know if this is something that, you know, might have either you've heard of it before or you might have just been doing it not knowing that it was, <laughs> that it was a technique. Um, I would love to know, has anyone heard of that before? Or has anyone practiced that? And if you haven't, it's all good. That's what we're here. We're here to learn, right? So the if-then technique, this also, it forces us to create a strategy that reduces the scope. So remember in that other side, so same, oh, Josh. Releasing expectations and sticking to the schedule. So the if-then technique helps us, forces us to create a strategy by reducing the scope, by reducing those expectations and sticking to the schedule before we actually need to do so. Practice unknowingly. <laughs> yes, I love that. Unknowingly. I dig it. And so what this does is that it sets us up for success in a sense of, just in case life happens, something happens, a fire gets thrown in our face, whatever it might be, that we still have an option. We still can consider unpredictable circumstances that are still going to serve us. So it's not like, and I know that this was something that I had done so many times before, which is why health goals, my health goals failed, was that I had this strict, rigid, must work out for this amount of time each day, starting at this, have to wake up at this time in order for it to happen. Otherwise my entire system falls apart. Well, what about not getting sleep? So if there was a, you know, a night where I wasn't getting lack of sleep that didn't stick to it, ah, self-sabotage, freaking out. But if we give ourselves that space and those boundaries, right? So allow for fluidity and sticking to that system, it gives us the opportunity to still work towards that goal right? Just looks a little bit different. And so that's why we want to give ourselves this space, right? The space of if this, well, guess what? We have a backup plan. All right. So any questions so far? I feel like we're doing good. All right. Cool. All right. So now shifting more into, because of course, this is health goals. I am a health coach must talk about what health actually means to you. So this is something that I actually, I get really, really deep into it with, with my clients. Um, but for the sake of today, I still want to be able to address this because I do feel in, in others as well, given that sometimes some of our goals, they fail because they're not meaningful to us, or they might be an idea or they might be a goal of someone else's. So with that, so definitely this is, I would love to hear from the group. What does health mean to you? So again, this is kind of circling back to that, my whole, what I was talking about before is that health is so vague. Health is so vague and it's so broad, but based on everyone has their own experiences with health. Everyone has their own ideas, their beliefs, their thoughts about health. 
But when it comes to thinking of health goals, because it's so vague and so broad, it can seem a little bit intimidating to even think, well, how do I even dig into health goals, right? Tend to actually go maybe towards nutrition and working out. Great, huge component of health, but there's so many so many other things that go into health. So I'd love to hear, and you feel free to put in a few, few words in the chat box or whatever it is, you guys are already doing a really great job of that. What does health mean to you? And non, non-judgment, non-judgmental space, safe space here. A balanced physical, mental, spiritual well-being. Yes, holistic. Love it. Healthy being my own and my doctor. Strong, strong body, less anxiety around food, happiness. Yes, I love these. See how already health is health is a very different definition for everyone. So by focusing on this, and I definitely invite you to um, to reflect on this, reflect on this outside of this this presentation, and and really ask yourself, what does health feel like for me? How will I know I've achieved health? Health is a form of self-compassion, self-love. Yes, Brooke. Yes. Balance of mind, body, spirit, and social. Oh, I love this. Amazing. So there you go. You guys have touched on all of this. So these, there are many pillars of health, in my opinion. These are probably, I would, I would assume, um, the more discussed ones, the more popular versions, more popular pillars. So mental, physical, emotional, social, spiritual. And so this is something that I also get to work. I love working on with my clients in those, those e-coaching modules, because it really helps to, to kind of extract what our actual own definitions of health is. So this is just to kind of just show you again, with health, tend to think body, food, but I love that what who shared, it's so much more than just personal training and eating greens, right? There's so much more to that. And the focus of the point of me even discussing this is we, I love that everyone has so far has shared this as holistic, right? Health is not only working on just body and food, right? Because if we're only working on our body and food and the physical part of that, well, what happens to our mental health? And with our mental health, then how are we going to stay committed to our goals? And if we're not physically active, how are we able to, how are we supposed to work through our emotions, right? Emotional intelligence. So much of this is intertwined and really doesn't it maybe builds on top of each other, but it really is all about maintaining this balance and whatever that means to you, right? So kind of digging into, again, these vastly different experiences of what health is. And so we want to remove this idea that health is just one thing. It's just this one definition. So what are your health goals and how can you be able to focus on this feeling of what health feels like, right? Because health is a feeling, it's a feeling, feeling that we're working towards. All right. So now getting into the fun stuff. So here is, if you do not have a, um, anything to write with or write on, um, we're going to do a little bit of workshopping. So this is actually, you guys are getting a sneak peek into some of the, the e-coaching module, the e-coaching work that I get to do with my clients. So lucky you guys. Um, so starting right off, what is your Epic health goal? And I'll go into what Epic means, but just start thinking about that. What is your health goal. And feel free, I'm, I'm going to give you all some time um, in between to, to write these down. So go ahead and write them down. We're going to go through this pretty quick. I wouldn't say too quick, just for the sake of time, because this usually does take a really long time to do. Um, but just go ahead. And what I, I recommend is just jotting down a few notes, words, sentences that come to mind right now. And then take time to revisit this when you have a little bit more time, not on a time constraint to really write these out and really crystallize them. Because when we write out our goals, and this is from my experience, from client experience, I hope from your experience as well, is that it makes them a little bit more real, right? When you actually can see it on paper, you take it from whatever your goals are just kind of floating around in your brain and you put it down on paper, Something about that. Well, actually, I, 
I know something about that is scientific studies show that the actual physical handwriting of it helps to, I'm not using the right terms for this, but helps to basically better ingrain what it is that you're writing helps us to, helps our brain remember it a little bit more clear. So what is your health goal? Write it down. All right. So now, so this is the Epic model that we have. So this is how we get to, so when I say we, I'm LaVita, um, how we get to help kind of sort out these goals and circling back to why health goals tend to fail. And by keeping this focus, this, this very simple, just Epic, this framework um, is another really great tool to help us to when things change, right? When life changes and we might have to reestablish our goals or maybe even revisit them or change them completely. By having this, keeping this framework is really, really helpful just to keep things simple. Because again, I feel like sometimes with health, it can be a little bit overwhelming. It's vague, it's broad. I don't know where to start. So start here. Your goal is inspiring it's to get you excited. Is it actually, do you look forward to it? Or is it something that you feel that you have to do or should do? It might not be super motivating. So just being super, very, very, very honest with yourself. So this is where I, I, this is why I suggest taking time to reflect on this outside of this presentation so that you can really feel into that. So thinking about your goals, do you get excited? Do you get little butterflies? How does it, how do they make you feel? Are they inspiring? Practical, right? This was another, another uh, reason why I know someone else shared that why health goals tend to fail. It's just unreasonable, unreasonable. Um, it might be a stretch goal, um, but I won't read all of this, but, but practical, right? We want to make sure that it's actually achievable. We want it to push us outside our comfort zone, but we still want to make it feasible right? Because then we get discouraged. We might resent it. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure that it is actually practical. Impactful. So your goal is meaningful. Life-changing, right? Because this is your life. This is us. This is for us. So is it impactful? Are you excited to make the change? And then clear. So this is another one. It's not clear, right? Our goals tend to fail because we're not clear. That's why writing it down helps us to really crystallize that. So it's definable and measurable so that we can actually figure out what action plans and steps go into our goal plan. So epic, elevating, practical, impactful, and clear. All right, so this is building how we build your own system, right? So we wanna make sure that our system is centered helps keep us grounded and focused. So, and this is, I'll share, um, I'm gonna make a note. I'll share um, some of, uh, maybe one or two of these slides, just so you have this. It's just like a little sample so that when you take this work outside and, and focus it on your, for yourself and you work on it on your own, um, you at least still have this as kind of a, a, a guidance, a guiding, guidance, goodness gracious, guideline, holy cow. Um, so building your system, goal first, what is your goal? And then your milestone. So what's your first milestone to help you achieve this goal? So these are your kind of like your, well, milestone, it's the best way to put it. <laughs> I'm not going to try and think of a better word. So milestone, right? So this is your goal is how will you know that you're achieving your goal. So first milestone, what is that? What is your first milestone? And I will, like I said, cause this, this, this takes, this takes some time to really think about it. Um, so for the sake of time, um, I will keep going. Uh, but like I said, I'll make sure to send this so that you can actually fill this out and on your own. So deadline for first milestone, Deadlines are a little bit tricky and actually now thinking about this might go against the whole theme of this <laughs> preparing, planning for change. But I truly do believe, and science will also back this up, that having some sort of deadline really does help us to stay focused. I know I need to do this for myself, for work, for my health. If Libby is still on, she knows that I need deadlines. Um, but just giving yourself that something so that you know what to look forward to, right? 
And then taking it, <laughs> yes, Libby. And then taking it a step further is what is the action step for this milestone? So what do you physically actually have to do to help yourself achieve this? So what is those actions? So maybe kind of just thinking of, of examples. Um, so first milestone is let's say, um, let some of these people in. Um, so first milestone, let's say, is is making a habit of making a habit of working out three days a week, right? So what's your deadline for this? Let's say at the in two months, two months I will have build a habit of working out three days a week. So what's your action step for this? Well, if I were to take my own advice, I would observe what time of day. So what does my week look like? Where do I actually have the time and the energy realistically, right? We love to think that we might be morning people, but if we're not morning people yet, this is where we start to build that habit. So action step. So this is going a little bit deep, but kind of just showing the different directions that you could go is I know that I have to wake up a little bit earlier each day in order to get my, my movement in. So instead of, let's say I'm waking up at seven each morning, well, I know that I have to wake up at six to do all of this, right? So my action step isn't start waking up early. It's easing into that. So maybe I start waking up 15 minutes early one week and then 30 minutes early the next week. And so then by the end of the month, there you go. I have, I'm halfway to my first milestone. So that first month is all about getting me, getting myself into this groove, into this habit. And so some of these other kind of life hack, I guess you could say, um, action steps would be even getting more granular. So if I know that I have to wake up early to work out, well, what if I, to re re release and get rid of that negotiation process of should I hit snooze or should I get up, is putting my clothes on the floor each night before I go to bed so that I wake up. I see my clothes, my phone's on the other side of my room. I'm physically up, I'm ready to go. I'm basically there, right? Basically there. So just kind of depending on how granular you wanna get, using these action steps really helps you to know, okay, if this is what I have to do and this is what I have to do next, all right, there you go. And so it kind of, it helps us to release this idea of this big goal, it's, it's big, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it, I'm not sure how to do this. And all we have to do is just make it simple. Get up, put clothes on, get out to whatever the workout is, right? All right. So now we're getting into kind of more of the, I don't know another word to call it, but more of the, the less tactical stuff. So this is where I invite you all to, to continue to, to journal this or to write this out. Um, so again, maybe jotting down a few sentences, a few words here, and then revisiting all of this at the end when you can uh, give yourself time. So who do you get to become? Get to, I say get to, who do we get to become in order to achieve this goal? So this is envisioning the best version of yourself. So who, what kind of person do you get to become? I don't even like saying what kind of person because I truly believe that our best, most authentic self is we're already there, right? We just have some habits and some beliefs and some other stuff that we have to sort sort through to get to that. But who do we get to show up as in order to achieve this goal? So just kind of thinking in my head, um, motivated, energized, um, positive mindset. So kind of thinking about, you know, certain things like that in the sense of who, what is your best, most authentic self? What does that feel like? What does that feel like and who do you get to become? What, what, what do you get to share? How do you get to show up in order to achieve this goal? Because this helps us to put ourselves actually in, envision ourselves doing the work, actually achieving that. So who do you get to become? And probably one of the more important parts of this, is why is this goal important to me? Why is this goal important to me? I, I, I couldn't see if I had any clients on today, but I think I ask why almost every single session over and over again, why? 
why, why, why? And so going back to what some of the, um, what some of you shared in the beginning about why goals fail, not meaningful enough, or uh, someone else also mentioned that maybe they were other people's. So if, if you might be struggling to answer why this goal is important to us, well, we don't have to just completely get rid of it. We might just have to revisit it or think about, okay, why, why is this not feel important to me? And maybe it's a time, maybe it's what's going on because we certainly cannot, <laughs> even though we might be seeing the light at the end of the tunnel with, with COVID and with the vaccines and stuff, there's still, there's still a whole lot whole lot of chaos and a whole lot of stuff going on around us, right? But if we can continue, so that's not to diminish that because that's going to that's gonna keep happening, right? That we can't control that, but we can control how this means to us, how this feels to us. So just simply asking, why is this important to me? Why is this goal important to me? And also, that also helps to just stay focused and on the days that you might not Maybe you just do your non-negotiables. Maybe you just do your bare minimum today, right? Your why helps you to do that bare minimum. Why is this important to you? You have the enough emotional connection to it that it gets you out of bed just to do the bare minimum on the days that you might not have enough energy, but your why is what's also going to get you to do, go above and beyond on the days when you really are feeling it. So what is your why? And then when what I like to achieve this goal by. So again, kind of getting back into the what those that milestone, that framework looked like. So this is basically just going through all of this. So when would I like to achieve this goal by? And again, give yourself time to think this one through because I've learned from my clients that setting goals, this is something that I, I, I have to work on with them is they'll they'll set a goal just pick a random time that they think might be a good time to achieve it. But if that timeline doesn't actually work out or it might be unrealistic or we haven't really thought about it, then it kind of makes things a little bit hairy. So just thinking realistically, when would you like to achieve this by? And this is not to make us feel bad about not achieving this by a certain time. Again, this is just to help us stay focused and grounded and keep moving forward even when life gets in the way. And then how are you going to achieve this goal? And so something that I invite my clients to do is just writing out. And I actually do this, again, let me, I do this as part of my job is just writing out all of the action steps that need to be done in order to achieve this. So what are all of the, what are all of the action steps that, that are gonna go into this? Just write it out, just brain dump, get it all out. Just get it all out on paper. How are you going to achieve this? And then by just getting it all out on paper, then you can start to organize like, okay, that's realistic for my lifestyle right now. Okay, I can do that. That's doable. All right, that one might be pushing myself outside my comfort zone, but I'm still gonna write it down. So that way you can organize, organize your thoughts and actually construct that game plan. So jotting this down, what are all of your action steps? And then, you can reference that um, the milestone framework to help you organize all of this into an actual action plan. All right, so that was a lot. How are we feeling? How are we feeling? So, like I said, given that we kind of ran through all of that. So everything that we just, that whole workshop that we just went through, I went through all of those questions in the, in the, the milestone, that's actually an entire almost week long, few weeks long uh, module that, that, that we work on with our clients. So I ran through it quick. Um, so please, please, I'll, I'll share some of those slides um, so that you can revisit and really take the time to write all of that down, right? Today was just kind of giving you the framework right? So giving you the framework of what is going to help you stay committed, stay focused on those goals, not only stay focused on those goals, but actually act on those goals, right? Actually act on them and, and having that action plan right there for you. So that framework's there to provide that guidance, but of course, please take the time to, to really reflect on that after. 
I feel like I've been talking a lot because I have been, <laughs> but I would love to hear from you all and go ahead and you can put in the chat box. Actually, we might be, oh, never mind. Go ahead and put in the chat box. We might have, we'll have a little bit of time um, for Q and A after um, if anyone wants to unmute themselves. Um, but for this, I'd love just to see what is one thing that you all learned today? And what is one commitment you're going to make for yourself today? So what is that? You can share one of them, you can share both. Would love to hear from you. What's one new thing you learned today? And what's one commitment you're gonna make for yourself today? My commitment is I'm actually going to write out my milestone action plan and get it out on paper. I talk a lot about goal setting. I talk a lot about action plans and milestones, um, but guilty, don't always do that myself. All right, anyone? Epic framework. Awesome, Carrie, thank you. So one new thing, the epic framework, one commitment, setting a health-related goal. I dig it. So then of course, digging into that more, what is that goal? Why is it important? Who do you get to show up as to achieve it? And what do you get to do? What are your action plans? All right, so please continue, feel free to share. Go ahead and turn, oh yes, oh yay, they're coming in. <laughs> um, so while, oh, you know what? I meant to have these links ready to share in the chat box um, for all of you. Actually, I'm gonna stop sharing and, and share them anyways. Um, so this is just some additional stuff. So if anyone has any questions about coaching, so whether that is health coaching, career, leadership, life, um, we do offer complimentary consults with our with some of our team. And this is really just to, even if you're not ready to commit to coaching, um, this is just a really great opportunity just for you to ask questions, explore, ask our team, what is coaching like? You know, what can I expect? Um, you know, what are your goals? So our team does a really great job of just asking you, what do you want to achieve? What are your goals? And they get to pair you with one of our coaches to help you achieve them. Um, so I'll make sure to share um, that link in a second. Um, and also if you want more free webinar um, content, we do have a YouTube channel, which I will share in the recap email. Um, and then also I have another blog that I wrote about um, healthy habits that I'll make sure to share with everyone as well. All right, and so now we'll go into questions. And I'll stop sharing so I can see faces. All right, so let's look at some of these. I learned the if, if then technique, great. Oh, I love these. My commitment is to continue, continue listening to what my body needs. Ooh, yes, body first. Our bodies are always communicating to us. And sometimes even sometimes with with health goals or with goals in general, we tend to lose some of that connection, right? And our bodies are always letting us know what health actually feels like for us. We, we tend to know what, or we think we might know what health is, right? Given logic and social media and just our logic brain and thinking this is what we should do, have to do, but our bodies always, always know the answer. Our bodies always know the answer. I love that. Thank you for sharing that, Allison. All right, Kim, so focus on the change process, how to achieve the goal. I commit to monitoring my carbs to reduce. Great. Great. I love that. And again, so then taking these, so Kim, taking this, so taking that further. So why is that important to you, right? Why is that? Why is that change process important to you? One new thing, the epic framework, believe in the process and keep working on it. Yes. Stick to that system. Trust the process, trust the process, trust the process. I love this. All right. Okay, so opening up for questions. Does anyone have any questions at all? Um, and feel free to put them in the chat or if you want to, uh, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Happy to hear if anyone wants to share. while you are thinking of questions, I'm gonna go and grab that link really quick to share 
um, if anyone has, if anyone is interested in, um, um, in learning more about coaching, right? Um, I, actually, I'm just going to save all of those links for the for the email because I think it, it'll be easier. Um, but yeah, I'll keep this open for anyone that does have questions. We have 10 minutes left, plenty of time. Um, I know today was a lot. There's a lot of content. Um, and so if you have any questions that come up after, I will have all of my, my contact information in there. So anything that, that might come up, feel free to reach out. Um, yeah, any questions? I'll leave it open. Ah, Libby's gonna grab the link. Thank you, Libby. All right. So no questions or comments. You can also share your commitment. Share your commitment, share what you learned. I enjoy talking with, with new friends here. All right, we'll wait for that link from Libby. Um, and then, all right, we'll see. Oh, another question for anyone who is still on, oh, I feel like a lot of our group left, but curious, um, is anyone who is a ALV member here that are still left here? Would love to know. That was a question I meant to ask before. We're actually ALV members. I know we got a few few new people showing up today for their first webinar. Is anyone coaching with one of our Ana Vida coaches here? I see some names. Ah, thank you, Libby. Appreciate it. So if you are interested in learning more just about coaching, what it is, um, how it might be able to benefit you, or if, even if you don't, you might not be ready for coaching right now. Totally cool, totally fine. Um, if you wanna just learn more information about it so that you have it ready for you when you are ready, that's also great too. All right. All right, well, if there are no more questions, then I can go ahead and give everyone back a few minutes in their day. But thank you all so much for showing, showing up today. I know that today was, it was a lot, lots of content, um, but I will be sending out that recap email um, later on. So if you do have any questions or anything else comes up, um, whether it's feedback, anything that you would love to see us talk more about, whether it is within health or if it's anything else, um, you know, always please reply to those emails and, and let us know. Always happy to hear from you all. You're welcome, Carrie. Thank you so much for coming. All right, everyone. Well, thank you all again. Um, I hope that anyone who is in the Midwest and um, dealing with snow, that you stay safe and warm. Um, and for everyone else, have a wonderful day. And I hope to see you guys all again soon. Have a good one.